lost our timer after it. All right. So we're live right now. All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Metal Arms Glitch in the System. We're just finishing watching the opening cutscene that takes forever, but we're about to get in it. So time starts when I take control of Glitch. Right? And now. All right. First thing we always do is change quick D-pad select to four-way. Uh, that way I can have uh, four pre-saved weapon selects instead of just having the starting two. Uh, this saves a lot of time later venueing. Uh, to get to the weapons that I actually need. Um, so in the opening cutscene that uh, we didn't show on the stream, they basically just explain the background. Um, long story short is uh, this is a planet full of robots, and there are the good robots fighting the evil robots called the Mills. The droids are the good robots. And they found Glitch, and now he's fighting for the good guys. So it's tradition here to run backwards, not only to show our skills, but there's just a small chance that they get stuck and they don't actually follow you. So I'm going to stand behind this door so he doesn't have to turn to look at me, so it opens slightly faster. Is it okay to read a donation real quick? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right, we got $14 from the original Xbox Whoa. saying, must destroy bots. <laughs> <laughs> so coming up here is the first tech that we use in this run. Uh, it's called a slope jump. And it is done right here. So while uh, running up an incline and jumping, it actually allows you to jump higher than you normally are able to jump. Uh, this allows us to get out of places we're not supposed to later on in the game. Um, I'm going to hide in this little hole, and I'm actually hiding from the game. So the game's trying to, it's going to try and find me and put me in the center of the room after this cutscene. But because I'm hiding, it doesn't know where I am, and I can actually just pop out and run by these mills and get by them and skip that whole fight. So now I need to drop down this elevator onto the platform. Um, I can't actually step onto the elevator, otherwise there's a sequence break and the door ahead of me doesn't open up. So because I skipped that fight, I can't actually walk onto the elevator and I have to um, jump down the shaft before touching the elevator. So my main weapon is a mine laser to start out with. This is a coin charge. It's the grenade in the game. It is super useful for taking out enemies and does more damage than it should. Um, this is called the speed slide. It's actually an intended mechanic in the game. When you're going down a really steep inclined slope, you gain a lot of speed and momentum, and then you can save that momentum by jumping. So we always try and get as many speed slides as possible, and then save the speed that we get from them by jumping continuously. So yeah, instead of going down that long wire, I'm actually just gonna go down and do a speed slide to the bottom and make it, oh, that was close. And that will end the level. So Metal Arms is made up of 42 individual levels. Um, the main category that we run in this game is any percent. And then the second most common is actually um, the individual levels. So. We have Easy and Nuts of Steel, which is the hardest difficulty. Um, mostly people are in Easy. There are a few crazy people that run on Nuts of Steel. Uh, sorry in advance. Uh, I skipped grabbing a weapon there, and the general, or um, not the general, uh, Colonel Alloy will be continuously reminding me to grab a weapon to cut the wires. So you'll hear him later, and he'll be reminding me. So this is the actual first fight, because we skipped the uh, one on the first level. Um, nothing I can really do, but 
So I'm using this. Oh, there he is. So I'm just using the spew. Each uh, grunt takes like half a clip. So I just really want to get in their face, and then when they group up, throw a grenade. So now I got this chip, which allows me to access arcade cabinets. Arcade cabinets are, um, they're put throughout the levels and they connect you to actually enemy grunts. So now I'm actually playing as an enemy unit and I blend in and they can't really tell until I start shooting at them. I'm just grabbing some more coin charges. I need to wait for a door to open up. That door right there. <laughs> He's just gonna keep saying that until I end the level, which is hopefully soon. Ooh, funky. A little graphical hair. All right, I'm trying to look at the ground here to reduce lag because there's just so many enemies in this um, area. Hopefully they're not. There we go. My health is getting low. Hopefully. Ooh. So then I, I want to hit that button and then in the same instance fall off the edge. So while this cutscene is playing, I'm actually finishing the fall. So I'll end up on the ground and not have to um, really pay attention. Uh, that jellyfish looking thing is called a leech. Uh, it's a really annoying unit that swings at you, but it can also grab you and pick you up. Oh man, this is getting, no, okay, <laughs> it's okay. All right, I'm, I barely missed anything, cool. Anyways, they're an enemy that um, spins at you, but they can also grab you and pick you up and shake you, which wastes a lot of time if they manage to catch you. So generally, we r either run away or destroy them right away. You've got to find your way to the mine entrance. Um, Our spies tell us that there you'll so this find level introduces the, the first vehicle the in the game called a loader. The loader is a hovering claw machine with a spew attachment. So this is the loader. So I got my claw here, and then I have a spew on the top of it. And I actually, it never, it doesn't have a cooldown, so I can fire that thing continuously. But in this level, we're just using it as a quick ride to the top of here. Just trying not to fall off the bridge. Hello. These are the barter droids. Um, they sell weapon upgrades, uh, ammo, new weapons. Um, in the If you play casually, they're really useful, and it's actually how you upgrade your weapons. But in the an easy any percent run, we don't interact with them at all, even though they have some great voice lines. Um, but in all the other um, runs of the game, so nuts of any percent nuts of steel and 100%, you, um, you buy things from them. So yeah, this level is just uh, going down into the mines, destroying this thing of Bob. <laughs> oh, I don't think I got it. Okay, good. I caught myself before I fell down. Normally I do a flip or a double jump and then in the middle of the double jump you can actually plant the dead pack. But yeah, the object of the level is to destroy this, to seal the mines so the bad robots, the mills, don't invade anymore. So, sadly, we can't skip these cutscenes in the Xbox 360 version. Um, this game can be played on PlayStation 2, GameCube, original Xbox, and Xbox 360. Uh, the only version that allows for cutscene skips in a, um, a new run is PlayStation 2, so it's actually the fastest version to run in the game. But out of all the people that run this game, there's only one person who plays on the PlayStation. 
Uh, the reason for that is because the PlayStation uh, was ported from the original, and when they ported it, one, they decided to add cutscene skips, and two, uh, they just messed up the controls really bad. So everything just feels terrible. There's a lot of input lag. It's just not a very enjoyable experience. So uh, instead of suffering through it and not enjoying the run, most of us just play on um, 360, which is probably the easiest version to get because you can actually buy it from the um, Microsoft Marketplace. So as long as you have a 360 and internet connection, you can get this game. So I finally got a weapon to cut those wires. It's the Ripper. <laughs> um, but I'm not going to use it until later. We got time for a quick donation? Yep, go ahead. Um, Dr. Prenderman donated $5. He says, you got this, Jason. Save those bots. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Prenderman. This level is, um, they actually sequence the level, so there's no way around actu around um, completing each zone, each area. Uh, so I have to take out every mill in the area. So even though we actually we have skips to get to places we're not supposed to be, uh, we can't continue the level without destroying these mills. So. It's the one sequencing that they put in the game that limits what we can do. Uh, right there, I just grabbed uh, some cleaners. They are probably the strongest weapon in the game. They are uh, auto-targeting grenades. And they come in useful for a lot stronger enemies. Especially since we skip most of the uh, good weapons in the game. So we become limited when we need to uh, actually do these fights. That bar to command center. We're gonna need a debt pack out here. Stop. Yep, give me the, the debt pack. Tunnel is blocked. Here, use this debt pack to clear the way. Hey, on my way. I'm coming along. I'll fight with you. I'll cover you. So yeah, I just have to plant the dead pack, get to the next area. There's a clip into the tunnel that saves, I don't know, half a second, but it can go disastrously wrong. So I'm just going to let the timer run out and do a speed slide down the tunnel. So once we get this loader, we won't actually have to use our spew much anymore. Yep. So now the loader with the infinite spew on it will be my main weapon. And if I can get close enough, I'll, um, I'll get him with the claw. Because it does slight damage every time you pick them up. Also just being closer to the enemies. One allows, uh, allows the more bullets to hit them because this view is so inaccurate but also uh, the mills throw a lot of coring charges the sector is secure. Let's move and on. if they throw them at you and you're standing next to them they actually blow themselves up so this is why I'm done with the spew now I've got access to the rockets and this will probably be my main gun when I need to use it for most of the um, things I need to do later on. So delaying there to grab the rockets um, isn't actually that much of a time loss because you have to wait for these mills to spawn in anyways. Um, so they're spawning in while I'm grabbing the rockets. And so instead of waiting over here for them to spawn in, I can actually do something useful and pick up weapons for later. So sadly, we lost that loader. Regroup. But the game is nice, and they give us another one. So this game has some interesting physics. <laughs> As you can see, that uh, vehicle is practically flying. 
And the loader actually does fly. I'm, I will show, be showing it in a later level, but because of the hovering mechanics of the loader, how it doesn't touch the ground, uh, you can actually use the walls in the game uh, as, the lo as the ground, which allows the loader to climb walls. Uh, we call it loader climbing. I'll be demonstrating it later on, but it just kind of shows off some kind of the like goofy physics in the game. Sector is secure. Let's move on. Last area. Uh, there's two spawns. There's one up here, so I'm going to try and hopefully they come from this one because I can shoot them as they go across the roof and I don't have to wait for them to um, spawn in. So I can get them while they're spawning in, which is really nice. They still throw coin charges. Uh, your allies in this level are basically useless. They have mining lasers, which is the weakest gun in the game. It just tickles them, really. Come on. There's the last guy. So now we have, um, I don't know, a demi boss, I guess. It's really just an enemy that um, shows up later in the game as a normal enemy. They're called guards. So it's not really an actual boss fight. They just, it's how they introduce you to uh, some of the stronger enemies. But I picked up that little flying robot guy. He duplicates uh, anything I fire. So if I fire rockets, it also fires rockets. So you can just hit the uh, guard with the three shots that you have, and it'll fire three shots. So you hit it with six shots, and it's uh, destroyed. So that's Krunk. He's the um, engineer for the droids. Uh, he's quite the mouth on him. He doesn't swear though. He bleeps himself. So he's he's a family friendly crotchety old man. Fun fact: he's actually uh, voiced by uh, Dan Castianeta, the voice of Homer Simpson. So they got an actually pretty good voice acting uh, group for this game. There'll be some other, there'll be another recognized name later on, actually. Does anyone here like Mario Kart? Anyone? If you like Mario Kart, you'll love this game, because you have driving. So this is the first driving level of the game. I actually get to control the vehicle. Uh, the, dr the handling in this game is pretty tight. Uh, besides the fact that they made the wheels out of uh, bouncy balls, I like to say they're like they're filled with helium. So if I hit any little bump, my front end will go flying in the air, and I'll probably flip. So what we try and focus on is staying on the ground and not going off too many jumps. So you see, I'll be avoiding as many jumps as possible. Uh, in the gunner seat on the back is actually a robot dog. His name is Zabi. Uh, even though he's a dog, he's probably my least favorite character in the game. One, because he's a terrible gunner. Two, because he's a terrible driver. And three, because he always gets caught. But he is a dog, so he's still a good boy. He does his best, at least. Um, I actually, in my Xbox settings, I've turned off the rumble feature. Uh, this game can get pretty excessive. Ooh. All right, we'll backflip. <laughs> but yeah, the rumble in this game can actually get pretty excess um, excessive with all the firing and bombs going off. So this corner right here, I'm going to get a huge screen shake. And normally, my controller would be going out of control. 
and it makes that uh, that jump right there really hard to hit. So I don't play with any rumble, which is kind of weird. It's the only game that I don't play with rumble on. So up here, I have to go off this chum. I've got a 50% chance that I'll totally biff it. Okay, it was nice to me this time. But you could just, I could have gone off that chum just the way I did, and it'll just send the front end way up into the air, and I'll have it to flip, and... So there's a bit of RNG while driving. You never know when a random little corner is gonna catch you and make you go flying. We have time for another donation? Oh, yeah. All right. This is an anonymous donation, and it's in French, so I'm going to do my best, which means push it, so. <laughs> Wait, what does it say? It's it's in French, so I'm, I, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> Google Translate. Google Translate. All right. I'll Google Translate it, for, and then the, the French restream can, uh, they can, they can say it in French. Let's see. Stand by. All right, standing by. Do a little off-roading here. Cutting corners, saving frames. Whoa, okay, I guess I'm going on this jump. I didn't want to go on that jump, but it made me. Can I read this thing? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so... From Anonymous, it was $20, and they say, the French will win cheese omelette. <laughs> but in French. <laughs> <laughs> but in French. Thank you for that donation. Um, what's the donation incentive at? I'm refreshing it. Okay. Save or kill the zombie bots. We've got kill with fourteen dollars in the lead. Uh, All right. Save has six. All right, we're killing the zombie bots. All right. So this level introduces a new enemy to the game. They are the zombie bots. They are piles of robot scrap that assemble themselves and disassemble themselves. So they have a pretty interesting character mechanic. Uh, they attack with a melee attack that causes you to go flying. Sometimes it's a blessing, sometimes it's a curse. Uh, when it's a blessing, we call it uh, zombie boosting. But usually they just hit you off the edge. So that was like a little zombie boost, kind of showing what happens when they hit you from behind and they launch you forward. Um, so because I'm killing the zombie bots, I'm just doing the normal route. Uh, if I save the zombie bots, there's some uh, bots in a cage over there that can be rescued and they join your team and fight for you. But in the normal route here, we do our first corner clip. This is one of our main ways to get out of bounds. Uh, you line yourself up with where two seams meet and then it just allows you to walk through a wall. Uh, that made it look a lot easier than it actually is. Uh, each corner clip feels different. You have different angles. Um, they can be a real hindrance sometime and sometimes you just pass right through them as if the wall is not there. But that corner clip is probably the easiest one because it's the only clip that we actually have a setup for. All the other clips are done by feel. All right. 
So this will be our first big zombie bot uh, boost. Zombie boost. There's some zombie zombie bots down here, and I'm just gonna get in front of them, and then I'll let them catch up to me, and then I'll just start jumping. And one of them, oh, they ignored me. That's a bummer. Oh, this is not good. Okay. That's where they're a hindrance, because, yeah, their melee attacks just kind of push you, and I just want to get around them, but they did not let me pass that time. They Gandalfed me. What the? But at least maybe now I can show this uh, boost. So, yeah. Oh. There we go. So, yeah. He gives me a push, and then I can just keep jumping to keep my speed. So yeah, I would normally have jumped over that second set of zombie bots, but just getting unlucky. I use the rocket here just to disassemble the zombie bots to get them out of my way. It's not actually killing them, it's just causing them to fall to pieces, which is fine by me because I don't need to deal with them. This gun is the Scatter Blaster. It is the shotgun of the game. Uh, at level one, it's not very strong. Just kind of a couple shots every every so often, but by the time it gets to level three, it actually becomes the strongest shot or the strongest gun in the game because it becomes a automatic shotgun that destroys everything. Oh, I'm gonna set. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting my quick selects. So now all my quick selects are uh, done. So I don't need to be gun menuing later on in the game. So I got my rockets, my scatter, and my rivet gun. Oh, I guess I'm going before I wanted to. <laughs> I should have actually waited up uh, on top a bit more. All right, my guns are still saved. Really what I should have done is sat up on this ledge so then I wouldn't have had any chance of them catching up to me. Because I needed the water to drain to a certain point before I can jump down there. So I just needed to wait a little bit longer. Got a little antsy. Luckily, this game has um, pretty frequent checkpoints. So if you're just learning to run this game or you're experienced, then you just keep making mistakes. Um, the checkpoints help out a lot. You don't lose too much time if you make a mistake. So it's very forgiving in that regard. So this is gate skip. What I'm trying to do is jump onto a ledge up here and just hop over the gate. There's a slight slope jump that allows me to get high enough to get to that upper part of the gate and then get over it and avoid a huge zombie bot brawl. This character is Moser. He's voiced by Patrick Warburton, who also vo voices Krunk from Emperor's New Groove. So this is like really early in his career. But uh, the next level, we actually get to play as Krunk. So there are levels throughout the game that you don't play as Glitch, you play as a different uh, robot ally. So this will be the first instance of that. Uh, he has completely different um, handling mechanics. He actually handles uh, quite slowly. It takes a while for him to get up to speed. And then he doesn't have double jumps or anything. But this level is quite quick, because once we get up here, we can just jump on the walls. I'm going to take it slow. But we just keep jumping through the top of the walls and go right to the end of the level. So that was Moser. <laughs> I think this is the first, yep. So this is the first boss fight of the game. There's actually only two major boss fights in the game. There's supposed to be a third boss, but they cut it due to time restraints. But this boss is uh, the zombie bot king. How you beat him. Uh, 
So I got my scatter. I start with the scatter. So first I need to do body shots on him to exhaust him. And once I exhaust him, he'll open his mouth and I'll throw a grenade into his mouth. So I use the scatter to conserve rivet ammo because the rivet gun is actually the gun that does the most damage to him. Um, there's a weird mechanic where if you shoot him right under the chin, the rivets will ricochet in his body, causing um, causing them to do more damage than they're intended. So you can actually get instant um, exhaustions from him. So I need to beat him before that zombie bot shows up. And that way I don't get messed with. And that's the fifth stage and final stage. So that was the zombie bot king. In the final two stages, he spawns uh, little zombie bots, which playing casually can be a huge nuisance if you don't defeat him before they get over there. But that actually went quite well. So coming up is my favorite level. Um, it's called Into the Trenches. Uh, it's my favorite level because uh, you, it's pretty interesting to get out of the map. Uh, it you can, it's, takes place in like these mountains and you get out to the side of the map and you can jump from area to area and it has the biggest speed slide in the game. And that speed slide actually allows a nearly impossible skip um, where you can fly over the next mountain and then you're able to jump into the final area. But it's only actually been done a few times. Um, there is a task of it if you want to check it out. But it shows it off how, I mean, you get a tremendous amount of speed and you just go flying over into the next mountain. So these are the mountains I was kind of talking about. I'm just going to get out of bounds right over here. And down here, I'm going to do a sideways climb. It's the only spot in the game we do it. It just, just so happens that the uh, incline is the right angle that you need to walk sideways for some reason. But you can actually do it. So, but that allows us to keep walking up along these mountain ridges. And here's where I'm going to jump into the next area and where the almost impossible skip comes in. So here I'm going to save my speed. Ooh, I almost made it. But sometimes you can save your speed so much that you make it up into the next mountain range. But because I didn't, um, I just need to do like a slight jump and just continue on my way. I have to play the level normally now. Uh, to continue, I need to destroy those turrets. So I don't care about anything but those turrets. Would now be another time for a donation? Or? Um, right when this level ends, i uh, just got to show off one last little skip, getting out of the level up here. I'm going to try and get in that crevice. Yep. And that allows me to jump over this final barrier and end the level. All right, go ahead. All right. Roma45100 donates $5. They say, good luck and eat omelet. Do fromage. <laughs> omelet, do fromage. Omelet, do fromage. Oh, well. Look who made it in one piece. Nice work, slow poke, but you're too late. It's funny that they keep bringing up cheese. When I was uh, first playing this game, my first account that I ever made on this game was called Cheese. Anyways, this is the uh, first tank level. It's the second, or actually third vehicle because they showed off the rat earlier. But it's the strongest um, vehicle in the game with the huge cannon. But we're done using the cannon for the rest of the game. We only use the tank for climbing purposes. So if you ever see a tank, I'm probably going to be climbing it because they just did not account for the body that the tank had and the ability to um, 
climb on top of it. So I'm going to wedge it here to shove the front end way up. And that's just going to let me jump up here and walk on the ramparts around the whole level. And then this will be the first instance of using the scope. Uh, using the scope here prevents me from being uh, loaded back to the last checkpoint. The game will check to see if I'm loading too many zones. And if I am, it'll kick me back. But if you have the scope um, out, it doesn't do that. And we can just go where we please. And of course, every good level ends in a corner clip. So this will be the first um, corner clip where I need to really feel it out. This may take me 10 seconds. This may take me 30 seconds. Got it, second try. OK, good. So this mill that I'm chasing uh, has the location of um, the droid's base, and we're trying to stop him. But there's a tank. Guess what I'm going to do with that tank? I'm going to climb it. Um, so the first time we used the tank, uh, we wedged it. But generally, you don't actually have to do it. Generally, you can just aim high and just jump off the barrel. And that lets you get high enough to get out of most maps that the tanks are located on. And that brings us right to the end of the level. Oh, and I picked a EMP up on that level. It's um, a secondary item that um, deactivates enemy mills, which prevents them from moving or attacking. We use it in a few um, instances. So this this level is a speedrunner's worst nightmare. If you look in the upper left part of the screen, you'll see a countdown timer, and you know what that means. I have to wait for the timer to run out, and all I can do is sit here in the turret. Um, I can explain a bit of the strategy. So there's three tunnels. The mills come in rats, and they show up randomly from each tunnel. Um, in phase one, they show up in groups of one or two. In phase three, they show, in, show up in groups from one to three. In phase four, there can be up to four rats coming from a tunnel. Um, or, yeah, phase, so the final phase of the level can actually have eight rats on it at once, which is the worst, a worst nightmare because even on easy, it actually becomes an impossible task to defend, but it's all random. So, you, so there's really nothing you can do about it. You just have to do your best and hope you don't fail because if you fail, you you automatically lose a minute because you have to reset to a minute left in the level and wait for the timer to count down again. Um, so the shooting mechanic, there's auto aim assist in this game. And when you're shooting in this turret, it's actually better to um, pump the trigger because it'll keep re-engaging the auto assist. And so your shots will be more accurate and you'll take them out faster, but you won't lose any um, rapidness, I guess, because you, you still shoot just as fast as normal, just the um, auto assist does more. This level also introduces the first predators in this game. Those are the four-armed flying guys that I just shot down. Some more will spawn in a bit, but they're generally considered one of the harder enemies in the game. But because we're in this turret, they don't stand, stand too much of a threat. They're just a really big annoyance. Because they, um, they don't go off of any of the uh, rat spawns. So in the final stage, there could be four rats spawning and a predator could spawn up right while they spawn. So we just gotta 
pray to RNG Jesus that we get a easy final phase. But these first two phases are pretty simple. I just need to just be able to watch the three tunnels. Another thing I can do to prep the final phase is to put a few shots in these tanks. So if things get dicey, I can desperately shoot one of those tanks and hopefully blow up a few rats at the same time. But generally, that's a last resort. Once it reaches down to about a minute, uh, hopefully a predator will spawn, and I'll actually let the predator live, and that will allow me to delay the start of the final wave, which then reduces the amount of chaos that can happen. So I'm going to let that predator live and just come all the way up to the front of the level. So now all the rat spawns for wave two should be done. And I'm just gonna let this guy drift. Maybe take some shots at him. So if I would have killed him already, then the final wave would have already started, but because I'm letting him live, I can delay when the final wave starts. I'll also save some time if I fail the uh, final wave. I'll reset to 54 seconds instead of a minute 15 or whatever it was when that last rat wave started. All right, I got really lucky. I just had two singles spawn. Oh, and I also have this bomb. Um, I didn't need to use it on the first two waves because they're so easy, but once you get to wave three, I just got to start launching these bombs and hoping they do something. So I'm getting really lucky on the rat spawns but really unlucky on predator spawns. Yeah, I don't even think I've had a set of four come out. So because there's a countdown timer, there's no real, there's not much in the way of saving time besides just getting good RNG. I think I got pretty good RNG. Maybe I'll have gotten a um, tied the IL for this level. Oh, okay. That was really good. Um, I wonder if one of the metal arms runners can check to see if that was an actual IL. Because I think, I thought it was like 116. I don't think it was 513. So maybe I'll have broken down the purple wall of ILs. All right. So this is a new trick that was discovered uh, last year. It's a wall clip that doesn't act like any other wall clip in the game. Um, so there's a panel there. I destroy the panel, and there's a seam in this like control cabinet. And I need to wedge myself into the seam. Oh, did I get it? I don't know. Nope, okay. Okay, I need to wedge myself into the seam and get right at the edge of the panel so that when I walk through, I'll walk straight down. Because if I walk forward, I'll void out of the map. So if I don't fall down, I'll end up in the void. Um, it is pretty finicky, because if you don't get it right, it just pushes you right out of the panel. So I'm trying to pop my head through, and that's where I know I should be on the edge, but then it's a matter of if the game will let me go through or if it will push me out. Okay. Oh, dang it. I thought I had it. Lucky the Titan's not attacking me too bad. Oh, 
so I made it through, but uh, because I didn't set up on the edge, uh, I went too far in and voided out. All right, there we go. So I dropped down. I need to take my scope out because I can be checkpointed out. And now I'm edge walking around the outside of the level. Oh, I didn't make it far enough. So that's the checkpoint um, thing where that happens. I didn't make it far enough while looking through my scope. Okay, wow. All right, I just need to get further down here. And then I should be fine. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna do some tight orb walking. In this last um, section, I'm not actually using my scope to avoid myself out. I'm just going to use it to line myself up to know how far over I can move. So I need to count. So I'm counting the ribs on my left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this tells me that I'm far enough where the end of the level is to my right. And now, based on the position of the scope, once that circle touches the edge of the map, I know I can't move any farther left. Whew, that's going to be close. Oh, I missed it. I need to get enough momentum to make it to the end of the level there. Otherwise, I fall short and just void out. Um, if I don't make it after this try, I'll just have to run through the level, which is fine. It's not a very long level. I just kind of wanted to show off this tech. Okay, first part done. Uh, okay, there we go. This time we're gonna hope we have enough um, speed to get there. There we go, okay. I know it's good when that um, scope hits the turret, so. All right. That's definitely one of the harder um, techs in the game. We're just going to ignore everyone here, except for this turret, because the turret actually hurts. I'm going to do a quick slope jump to be able to get down in here. And I'm going to try and do a cleaner dupe. And what that does is, while the cleaner's in the air, I'm going to back save, and the cleaner will continue and finish. And hopefully, it will have hit, yep, it will have hit the guy but now I still have that cleaner. Which will allow me to use the cleaner on him to get through here a bit faster. Um, I'm gonna back save to get some health. Every time you reload a checkpoint, you get two bars of health. Here's another control cabin again. Um, we're gonna show off the Walls don't matter in this game when you're trying to press buttons. <laughs> so I can just press the button through the wall. I don't, they just never fix that, I guess. A little Spider-Man action for you, climbing up walls. Okay, good. I was missing that in practice. Uh-oh. 
Okay, I'm just gonna not deal with that and go back to the checkpoint, which wasn't too far away. I'll try and sneak by him, and I'll stop following me once I get far enough away. Nope, he's still on me. I'm trying to get that shield. Okay, I got the shield. So now they can't damage me, and we're gonna switch to the strongest uh, weapon in the game, the Ripper. This will allow me to actually cut down bombs and destroy all the enemies in the room. Uh-oh, one survived. Oh, nice, okay. That was the guy from the other room, so I didn't have to kill him. That was close. Crunk's my favorite character. Anyway, I hacked one of the consoles and got some info. Corrosum stole some research from Exabo and is using him to help figure out the secret to all this Morbot crap. Something about the Morbots being gone and they're. So the Morbots are a extinct race of robots that created all the other robots. Kind of like the Forerunners in Halo. And actually, as we go down into the Morbot region, it gets even more similar to Halo. Even though the games came out basically at the same time, they just had the same idea, I guess. See, Krunk agrees, Zabi is useless. All right, so now we're going to play as Krunk. His weapon is a control tether. It allows you to um, take control of enemy robots. Ca in casual play, it's an awesome mechanic, being able to sneak up on enemies and then control them and use them to do your dirty work. Um, do a little bit of that later in the run, but as Krunk, we just ignore everyone and run away and do a wall clip. Krunk has a little bit of a different uh, dimension and I just need to get some glare off the screen. There we go. To get through. And now I can safely walk along the level, do some edge walking and not be bothered by any of the uh, bots fighting each other. Uh, the reason the mills are fighting each other in this level is because Krunk uh, releases some crazy ones that were being contained. So all the mills end up fighting each other. And now I'm gonna jump and I'm flying out of the wall. Didn't use it. You take it with you in case you need it. Bet the Exavolt never came up with nothing like that. I left the rat in the motor pool. Meet me there once you caught up with Flax. And don't come back without my f***ing chip this time. Uh, he mentioned Exavolt. Exavolt is a scientist that created the leader of the mills. But supposedly it was an accident. And he was destroyed by his creation. Krunk has a little jealousy for him. Here we're going to show off the uh, loader climbing. So I'm going to use the loader and I'm going to go into the wall sideways and it's just going to allow us to climb up the wall and then I can use it to fly and get to up this platform which normally you can't get up to. And then from this platform here I'm going to get to the second part of the map which is up on this outer ring using a small slope jump on the edge of this box. So I'm going to slope jump, and then on my um, double jump, I turn so I catch the lip of the platform above me. Uh, that's a really useful thing we use on the double jump, is you can actually change the direction that you're traveling on the second jump. You can only do it slightly. So there, I did it again, where I 
jumped at an angle to get the slope jump, but then when I double jumped, I turned towards the wall so I could grab the next ledge and get up here. All right, that was a really good you know the drill. Sometimes uh, loader climbing doesn't work the way you need to, and sometimes those slope jumps don't cooperate. So yeah, Zabi's disappeared because he got captured, but he's gonna show up and save the day. The one time he saves the day. Attaboy. But he immediately ruins any credibility he got by saving the day by driving like a grandma. This next level is the second worst speedrunning level. You are stuck in a car with Zabi, the grandma driver, and all you can do is shoot at passerbys. So I don't control how fast the car goes. I don't control where the car goes. It's all done by Zabi's AI. So if he wants to drive into a wall, he can drive into a wall. There's nothing I can do. And there's actually a moment on this level that you can soft lock because um, the, the driver AI uh, doesn't know what to do if it gets um, stuck into this corner. But all I can really do is try and shoot these guys before they bump into us, which slows us down a little bit. Yeah, so this is this will be the last um, poor speedrunning level, okay. less than ideal speedrunning level with no real um, input on my part. So yeah, he's got to make like a 20-point turn to make that corner. Got to go off all the jumps. I really don't have to shoot the obstacles. I played with the idea of um, doing this level blindfolded because I only need to shoot a few enemies to have enough health to finish out the level. The rest of it's all done by Zabi. So it wouldn't quite be on the scale of uh, Mike Tyson punch out blindfolded, but I mean, I'd have my eyes closed. That'd make this level a little more interesting. Maybe uh, if I come back next year, I'll do this blindfolded. I'll figure out where I need to aim my gun to take out enough enemies to make it to the end of the level and then just shoot my way through the level. Uh, if this was done on um, the hardest difficulty, Nuts of Steel, um, you actually do need to destroy enemies before they do too much damage to you. And I've never played Nuts of Steel, but from what I hear, it's pretty bad. Because you can get through most of the level and then take a bunch of damage and you have to start from the very beginning, which wastes a ton of time. Which is one of the reasons I don't play Nuts of Steel. So that uh, corner right there is, if he jumps into it, he can get stuck and that soft blocks the level. So I'd have to restart the whole driving process over again. These generators are the only thing I actually have to shoot. But he has an audio cue to tell me that I'm here, that the generators are there, so. That's why it'd be possible to do blindfolded. As long as I d don't disorientate myself. We're coming up on the end of the level here, so not too much more of Zabi's driving we have to deal with.
Maybe if I shoot backwards, it'll like push him forwards and we'll go faster. That's how physics works, right? So finally we're at the end of the level. We caught up to the guy that has the chip and now we just need to beat him. Nothing too crazy. Yay, we did it. I'm trying to show off. Th so that's a secret chip. They're um, hidden throughout the game. Um, they're used to unlock things. Uh, they're used to unlock multiplayer levels. So if you want to play all the multiplayer levels, you have to find all the secret chips in the game. So when you play 100%, you need to find all those chips and then upgrade all of um, the weapons in the game. And that also includes speed chips. So at the end of a level, you can be given a speed chip for beating the level in a certain amount of time. Uh, so to do 100%, you need to have beat every level under time. Yeah, now we're heading down to the Morbot region, which are the creators of all the robots on Iron Star. They've got the spacey new age technology. So yeah, the mills are down here trying to figure out what happened to them and also take their technology. But it's funny, so the same thing that happened to the um, the guys in Halo happens to the more bots here. So in the Halo, it was the Flood. Um, in Metal Arms, they're called Swarmers, and they're basically the exact same enemy. Just a bunch of little guys running on the ground. Um, they don't get introduced until, I think, the next level, but I can talk about them here because I'm just running around. So our friend, the Leech, Leeches are back. I just want to take them out so they don't mess with my jump up here. Grab cleaners for later. And now, so this weird looking thing, I don't know why they put it in, but it allows us to get on some ledges that it has and scale it to the top and actually get over it. And it's lower than all the other walls in the area, too. And now we can pass through invisible walls and go right to the end of the level. Eye Predator. I know this level's name because it is notorious for being hard. Not only with this new uh, trick that we found, but the original trick was hard as well. But the new trick, we have to jump around a flat wall, which should normally be impossible, but with the game's jump physics, we can actually get around flat surfaces like that but I have to do it two times. I'm surprised I made both of them. And now uh, there's a hole in the, um, the kill barrier in the water. So if I uh, bounce my character off the edge of that, it passes me by the kill barrier that's in the water. And I'm actually, quote unquote, swimming underwater as a robot grab that control tether from under the level, and then I'll hop back in right at the end.
Uh, this is probably the least interesting level in the Morbat region. That's the uh, best trick in the whole level right there. Just jumping from the start to there. Uh, if you have any donations, go ahead and read them. What was that? We just got one. Um, it's pretty long. So this is anonymous fifty dollars. Uh, says, thanks, Jason, Jason, and I'll take it from here. There isn't much to talk about on this level, which is why I'm bringing this right now. Throughout <laughs> the game, there's so many cool and interesting speedrunning strats, but not on this level. Not yet, at least. There are many things yet to be discovered, and if anyone would like to join this community and run Metal Arms or help find new tech for levels like this, you can join in on our Discord, which will most likely be posted in the chat, but can also be found on the SRC, uh, speedrun.com. The folks there would be happy to help out anyone interested in running the game. Whether you want to run individual levels or full game runs, all of, all are welcome. <laughs> Back to you, Jay Sand. Thanks. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't have much to talk about on this level, so I'd just like to point out that we do have a small community that works on uh, breaking this game down. and. Specifically, this level really needs some work. Um, we did just find a new strat uh, that will be demonstrated later in the game that has um, possibilities of being used in um, different area of the areas of the game, including this level. Um, but I can, we can show it off once we get there. I just need to finish the rest of this level now. Oh, come on. OK. Okay, did he hit it? Okay, good. I didn't quite hit him, but he he drove into it anyways. Okay, it's a pile up. Anyway, so once you EMP him, they like fall out of the vehicle, and so I just need a vehicle to grab this plug. If I can grab it. This is not me, this is the game. I am oh, there we go. There's really no end all be all for grabbing that, but. So I destroyed a guy here earlier. Um, he drops an EMP. I didn't kill him because I specifically singled him out. I just killed him for his drop. So I used an EMP there, but now I got it back. So here's the unskippable cutscene. Can't even be skipped in PlayStation 2. It's actually rendered in game, so you can do a bunch of things to mess with it. But the guy on the right is Slosh. He is a flamethrower for a weapon. Uh, we'll be playing him in the next level. Oh yeah, and then the, so the, um, while he was reading that wonderful donation, uh, it showed off the swarmers, which yeah are basically the flood, just like in Halo. So you have the forerunners in Halo, you have the uh, Morbots here, you have the flood in Halo, you have the swarmers here. I guess great minds think alike. I'd love to use that lift, but there's no power. Slosh is going to help us out with that here. Yeah, 
Okay, coming up is the only other um, trick I'm worried about in the game. Um, it's another one of the clips out of bounds where if you go too far, you end up voiding out, kind of like what research, which is where I was trying to clip through that control panel. This time, instead of a control panel, um, Slosh just has different um, hit detection because he's a different character. And so what we do is we wedge him into a corner up here and I don't, his hitbox must like go into the wall, but I'm actually holding forward. And then I will travel backwards out of bounds and end up in the wall. And now I'm just gonna edge walk and tightrope my way around to where I can go in the next zone. I'm sitting up because, oh, dang it. <laughs> I was sitting up so I could see the edge of the map better. Sitting down, it's kind of dark, I guess. Oh, well, we're just gonna have to do it again. So yeah, it's not only getting the clip on this level, but also not uh, falling off into the void here and in a, and in a later section. Okay. So I'm gonna try and just take my time. Concentrate. Can't go too far in towards the level, otherwise I'll get popped out of the wall and can't go too far out or I'll fall down the void. Luckily it's easy, so the swarmers that are on top of me, uh, they don't do much damage. Okay, one more section of this wall. All right, so now I'm top of the roof of the next area. And then I have a leap of faith over here. So somewhere over there is a hallway and I'm hoping that I land in that hallway. <sighs> oh, okay. I landed in the hallway. That was not smooth, but I'll take it. And now I just have to not get pushed into the water by this snark and this leech. And I'm just, I'm gonna take it really safe because I do not want to go through that again. I have actually been pushed into the water uh, from the edge of the uh, thing without even jumping. They just really got up in my grill. Okay. <sighs> so now we'll be leaving the Morbot region and we'll be entering Mill City. Uh, Mill City is the capital of uh, the evil robots. It's where all the mills come from. Um, it's where they have all the droids enslaved. And it's where General Corrosive resides. Casually, the game gets a lot harder beyond this point. Speedrunner wise, it's a lot easier. Now I'm done with the randomness of the Morbot region. Now I just gotta cruise. Basically, I'm just gonna run past everyone and take out the turrets that do the most damage. This is only a strat on easy just because I can tank so much damage. I can basically ignore all the enemies that are firing upon me. Yeah, I should have plenty of health. Just gotta sprint by this last predator. Oh, didn't get the two jump. 
That's okay, I had plenty of health. Uh, I'm not going to put my weapon away. Actually, I will, just to show off um, that the next area, droids are actually allowed. So if you don't have a weapon out, they won't shoot at you. And then as soon as I take a weapon out, then they become me. They become angry. And how every great level ends with a corner clip, every great level begins with a corner clip. So this is where I just send my face into the wall until, yep, there we go. A little bit of out of bounds action. What's that I see? A tank. <laughs> I wonder what I'm gonna do with it. Certainly not shoot enemies and actually use it for its intended purpose. Nope. I'm just gonna ride with my partner, I guess. He wanted to come along. Aim up to the sky. And dive over the fence. Okay, coming up, we have some new tech. Um, if this uh, new tech wasn't introduced to the game, um, I don't know if I would be speedrunning this game because this uh, this level normally plays out as a um, it takes uh, children's games like Red Light Green Light and Simon Says, and then you play them out. And it takes a lot of time, and it's not that annoying. But instead, I'm going to run at a wall. And using this wrench that I just picked up, I'm going to disassemble myself right as I um, go into the wall. And so I'll lose collision, and that'll allow me to phase through the wall. And then when I reassemble myself with the wrench on the other side of the wall, I can just phase through walls without having to go through this level. So. This one probably takes like a minute or two uh, without the wrench or without the these wall clips. Oh, I don't even know. Probably five plus minutes. I just haven't actually played this level through since I was a kid because I haven't played casually in a while actually. The whole point of that in the story was to um, collect the mill chip so that the droids can study the mill operating system. So that's the chip they're talking about. So here's a trick that we should have known about for a long time, but we just never put two and two together. So it works the same as um, cleaner duping, which we've known about for a while. And basically what happens is uh, when you restart at certain points, 
the game state will save, but things in your inventory will also save. And we used to play through this level normally by collecting the dead packs to destroy these walls in every level. But now, um, right when the walls blow up, if we reset, the game state will save as if the wall blew up, but it uh, won't... Oh, I didn't do it right. Um, but then the game will not think that that dead pack was used. So I need to restart right when it blows up, and I think I did it just a little too late. Hopefully I did it right this time. Otherwise, I'll just play through it normal. It shouldn't be that hard. Okay, it worked this time. So yeah, the wall's destroyed, but the dead pack that we used to destroy the wall still exists. So because this dead pack is so close to where we're driving the rat, it's the fastest one to collect. So now that we have it in our inventory, at that checkpoint, the game will just always remember that we have a dead pack in our inventory. So I'll use the same dead pack I used in the last area to destroy this wall. I just need to back save. And I don't have to collect the dead pack that goes with this wall in that area. So it saves some time going around collecting items. This is the last wall, so now I don't have to back save. There's a task of this level that has been done that allows um, just glitch to get to this zone and make that jump using a major speed slide. But it is impossible to do it normally. All right, we're back in the junkyard. I missed the speed slide. These next few levels um, just have some platforming that we used to get places faster and do things a bit quicker than running through. So I'm going to do another straight vertical jump to cut this corner get a nice speed slide to the end. Okay. Nice. There's like a small ledge that you can get on that second little platform. Um, if you miss it, you just slide off and it doesn't allow you to do your second jump. Yeah, I'm just trying to do the level as unintended as possible. Um, a droid agent. He was disassembled. He was found out and disassembled. And now we're collecting his parts to find out the information he knows. Once again, we're just going to run through the level and optimally platform through it. Try to avoid getting hit too hard like that. So the intended way to finish this level is to zip, uh, use that zip line. Uh, but zip lines are very, they're not reliable. 
So we're gonna try to avoid it by climbing, climbing up over here. Um, when you're on a zip line, you can just randomly be knocked off just by being hit by something. Um, so if you want to use the zip line, generally you have to clear all the enemies out to use it. So we just avoid it at all costs. So now we're going to be um, assembling our spy and he's going to preach to us and tell us about the goings on in the mill compound. Let me know when we can do a donation. We got another one for you. Oh, yeah, go for it. All right. Tron Javolta donates $30, and he says, I have no idea why there's an incentive for Joshua to take his socks off during his run, but I'm donating to it even if you ban me. <laughs> Thank you, Tron Javolta. Uh, I'll take my socks off for $30 for charity if you want me to. <laughs> So reassuring he is. It's like he's sending his thoughts and prayers with us as he abandons us. He does give us a servo upgrade, which allows you to switch weapons faster and reload faster, but. I don't even notice that I have it. Level 3 servo. Doesn't really do anything. But this guy, he drops a recruiter grenade. And as a casual, it's probably the most fun gun in the game. Well, it's not a gun. It's a grenade. But of course, I'm going to do a corner clip and hopefully not die before I succeed. Nope. We'll face wall action. Sometimes it just feels like you're running into a brick wall. There we go. Uh, anyways, so the recruiter grenade uh, it allows you to recruit uh, enemies, enemy mills to your side. So you throw it at an enemy and they switch sides and start fighting for you. So what's really fun to do in a casual playthrough is get as many strong enemies together as you can and then get a recruiter grenade to recruit all of them. And then you can just storm through a level with like four titans at your back. And if you're uh, really lucky, you can also take control of one. So you have five strong enemies just plowing through levels. Speed running wise, the recruiter gate really just um, saves us damage when we need to save damage. We don't actually use the um, the guys that we recruit to really do any cool things yet. So now I'm just going to run through this level with the whole mill army at my back and hopefully I have enough uh, health to end it. So this is where the recruiter grenade will come in handy because um, it will save me some damage when uh, I get towards the end of the level because I won't have too much health with all the um, predators and titans shooting me from behind. I think I'm going to just do this guy. So yeah, now he's on my team. And hopefully he will slow down the people chasing me. And they'll get distracted and go after him. Oh, I still got one. Dodging bullets here. He's over here. It's 
destroying those guys uh, saves me some health. Oh, I did not. So yeah, a Titan will spawn in front of me. But the end level is right behind him, so if I can just get through here, I made it. Okay, first time we use the tether. Oops. So I'm gonna throw it right to where he lands and he jumped. There's a chance that he doesn't jump and there's a chance that he just stands still. But if I just go and stand back in the zone, he'll generally come back after me and I can take control of him. So yeah, that's what the tether does. Like, you can just use enemy mills to do everything you need to. In this case, we just need him to hit a button and not actually fight for us, but... Where am I? Okay, I lied. We actually used the tank to fight here. But not really. I'm just joyriding, taking out this barrier. This is the reason we need the tank, because we need to break down that barrier and keep joyriding. I mean, who wouldn't want to just joyride in a tank? Crushing lamp posts, running over robots. And of course, climbing on top of them. So yep, we're gonna another tank climb and end the level. This is a long cutscene, but story-wise, it's kind of important. Because you find out that Exavolt was captured and now you're here to rescue him. And once again, the person you're sent to rescue is already free. Dr. Exavolt? You're supposed to be trapped in the tower. Why do I keep getting sent to rescue people who are already rescued? Um, just to mention some things about the game while we just watch this cutscene. Um, I think it's like a great game to speedrun if you're uh, just getting into speedrunning or um, hardcore. Uh, with the way the levels are set up, you can um, do a full run, which is long and takes two hours, or you can just do the individual levels, which can take 30 seconds. Um, so whatever amount of time you have, you can do runs in the game, and uh, to practice, if you, need, if you want to be practicing, there's no need to uh, create special save states or load special files. Because all the levels are broken down individually, the game already does it for you. And then if there's a specific trick in the level that you want to work on, you just get to the checkpoint and do the trick that's past the checkpoint. If you want to do it again, just reload the checkpoint and um, there's no uh, extra, you just need the game and uh, that's it. So, yeah, we'd love for people to join us. Um, we'd be happy to help. Uh, I'm working on a tutorial series that breaks down every level in the game, level by level. Uh, and then you just combine them together and you can do a full run based off those videos, or you can just watch the level and work on that single level. Uh, and then because the videos will be separated by level, if any new tech comes up, uh, the video can be updated. And so ideally, yeah, all the videos would be up to date with the newest things that us as a community knows. So we're back in Droid Town, but this time uh, they've sent the elite troops to try and take it down. So it's gonna be a little bit harder this time, especially since we haven't been playing the game properly and we still have 
really low level weapons. But luckily, right off the bat, they give us probably one of the strongest weapons in the game, the trooper. So we can tether him if he cooperates. He should just be hanging there. Yep, there we go. And now he can use this trooper to beat all the enemies in the level. So when fighting with the trooper, um, what you actually want to do instead of holding down the trigger is, once again, you want to pump the trigger. This will just allow you to fire faster. Oops. Um, you also want to get the high ground, so you want to be up in the air as much as possible. That way you can fire down onto enemies and use the splash damage that uh, the trooper's guns have. And so you want to take out the enemy troopers when they're on the ground. Because they're almost impossible to hit in midair. So while I'm in the air, I can dodge bullets and avoid taking too much damage. So I can use this one trooper through the whole level. Uh, you might notice the lost connection um, going across the screen. That's actually, if you get too far away from your tethered body, uh, you'll lose the signal and lose control of the trooper. And uh, once I beat this zone, I'll be demonstrating how we get around that. Okay. So first, sadly, I need to kill all my allies. Rest in peace. Thank you for your help. But then I'm going to uh, stow him away in this corner. And by doing that, he doesn't move because he can't see anything, so he just doesn't go anywhere. And hopefully my allies don't find him. If they do, I'm going to have to reset and track down who did it and take them out. Uh, it's not looking good right now. Yep, they found him. Okay. So I need to track down all the allies. just so they don't ruin everything. And if I have to play this level through normally, it's going to be a long level. OK, so he's not running anymore. That's good. Hey, j -Sand. Yep. Um, so Persian Chat, the guy who donated $30 for the socks, um, he said he would donate another $30 if you put the socks on your head or your shoulders, are you, are you down to climb? Oh, I'll do socks on my shoulders, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> here. Uh, you got you to gotta pay up, John. Let's go. Uh, luckily, I wore my good socks today. <sighs> They're fresh, too, so they don't smell too bad. Um, so yeah, by re-tethering the uh, trooper, I now have, I'm able to get over to this zone as well. Using the same trooper and not having to find another one. My health is doing okay. can't go over there because of the distance. Any other? Oh, here we go. I'm just waiting for... Let's move on there to we the go. Next area glitch. And now we don't have to go any further, so we can just head back towards the body the and not have to worry about distance anymore. I always said he would watch the base, but it doesn't look like he's doing a very good job. Once again, I have to come in and save the day. Raining down death and destruction.
Yeah, this level's simply just straight all mills. Is that all of them? Oh, there's another trooper back here. There we go. Let's move on. Oh, my feet are getting cold. I'm still waiting for that donation to come in. <laughs> Okay, new trick as of two weeks ago. It's called Jailbreak. And we used to have to listen to this guy for probably a minute, talk about nothing, but now we use him to teleport out of the cell. So that trick was just discovered right before, so I was practicing getting it down so I could do it for this marathon. But yeah, normally, so before uh, we learned about Jailbreak, this level took uh, probably like two, I think the best time was 2.15, and now the best time is down to 1.15. So that's just how much time that saves by not listening to that guy talk for a minute. So here I'm gonna take control of the Titan. So I got the guy EMP'd, which is great. But I'm trying to run to these uh, shredders. And the shredders just do damage to the Titan I'm in. Because I need to destroy the Titan that I'm controlling. But also, because the troopers, uh, one of their attacks is to dive bomb at you, they come into the um, shredder as well. So you don't have to waste time actually destroying the troopers and trying to shoot them down while they fly. So yeah, 119. Normally that's upper two minutes. So yeah, that, that was two weeks ago. A Man. minute. What? Go ahead, sir. Oh, yeah, a minute time saving trick. So if we can keep finding those, this is going to turn into a great run. All right, go ahead. So, Tron Javolta paid up. Ooh. He uh, donated another $30, and he says, the sacks are off. Also topping off that Octodad incentive. <laughs> Thanks for that donation. Um, so on this level, you get two droid allies, and they can randomly select the weapons that are presented, which are a rocket launcher, a rivet gun, a spew, and a ripper. If uh, your allies decide to pick the Ripper and the Spew, you, you basically get no help from them. But I got lucky. I got, one of them has the Spew and the other has the Rocket Launcher, which should actually help in defeating the enemies. But this part of the game is just gladiator style. You just get put in the ring with a bunch of enemies and some weapons and have at it. Kind of see that we haven't actually fought many zombie bots, so you can kind of see their mechanics, how they disassemble themselves to avoid being damaged. All right, we should. Oh, okay. They had a guy, bud. Oh, there we go. Some garbage. Oh, got the hell. Okay. All right. We are the gladiators. Feel like Maximus Aurelius. Back for more is the little showstopper from Droid. 
Let me out. So each gladiator level gets uh, progressively harder. So first we started being able to tether. And now in the last level, we actually got to select our weapon. Now we're stuck with the slingshot. Um, slingshot can actually be the strongest weapon in the game if used properly. Um, because I get to launch Corrin Charges, which are actually actually do quite a bit of damage if you can hit with them. The issue is trying to hit with them, but uh, we have a trick that allows you to be pretty accurate with the Slingshot without ever having to practice with it. Um, so once I EMP him, I'll explain it. Okay. So the little antenna on the back of Glitch actually sh lines up with where the slingshot will be shooting. So you can see the nub of my antenna is lined up on the body of the predator. And my uh, coring charges are going right, at, right there as well. So that's just a little hint to using the slingshot if you ever have any difficulties just playing the game through casually even. Now we get to meet General Corosa for the first time. But we don't get any weapons to fight him with, which is kind of unfair. But it sticks with the theme of them giving less and less to fight with. So we get a little speed slide here. There he is. How do you beat that, you ask? You don't. You take the wrench, and you play dead. You got me. Now leave me alone, please. Uh, there's foreshadowing in the speech of that uh, droid that we skipped earlier in Jailbreak. He ends his speech with, You'll leave in pieces. Hint, hint. Use the wrench. Now, very important part of the easy any percent run right here. So what happened to my weapons, you ask? Because I didn't have any in the arena. They just dump all the weapons you've collected out in front of you. So all the weapons you've collected throughout the game, all the upgrades that you got, uh, they'll be out in front of you. But because I haven't collected any of the upgrades, um, I'm actually going to do what we call the 5G glitch gets good guns glitch. Uh, and I'm going to avoid picking up the scatter blaster and the rocket launcher. So I can pick up the rivet because we already had at level three. But by skipping those two guns, which we've left at level one throughout the whole run, uh, the next time that they get dropped in the game, the game will actually drop us the fully upgraded version of the gun. So we'll get uh, a fully upgraded rocket launcher and scatter blaster the next time we pick them up. Uh, that allows us to actually defeat uh, the final uh, boss in a reasonable time. It'd probably take an extra minute or two if we didn't have the fully upgraded versions of the guns. Just the final driving level. little Mario Kart. So the first driving level, I compare, um, compare it to Mario Kart's 100cc uh, race, where you're driving and there's blue shells, there's other uh, NPC racers. The second one is like being on the back of the bike in Double Dash, 
where your crappy teammate sucks at driving and all you can do is yell at him. And this one is basically like ghost racing where there's really no enemies. You're just racing yourself for time. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, once again, I'm just trying to avoid jumps, which is harder to do in this level, but also trying to stay out of uh, the water. And most of all, try not to crash. Uh, Story-wise, we escaped the Coliseum, and now we are trying to catch a ride to the Mills Space Station, where General Corrosive's main base is. Which is crazy to think. Like We started the game in some mines, and then we were in Droid Town. Then we went to the junkyards. And then Morbot Region, and then Mill City. And now we're headed to space. We go everywhere in this game. There basically isn't a spot on this planet that we haven't been. So if you've never heard of this game, it is actually a pretty ga great game to play casually. Generally, people who played it remember it fondly. So if you want to play a retro game, well, not completely retro, but an older game, GameCube, I suggest GameCube for casual playthrough. Uh, this would be something to maybe put on your radar if you have some time. Please don't play the PlayStation 2 game, though. You'll hate the game, and you'll think it's the worst game ever created. Space. like things are moving along nicely. It should be well under time, so. I'm not holding this, uh, this marathon up. That's no moon. Aye, aye, aye. So yeah, we're coming up on the last few levels here. Um, Right before the final boss, we're just going to be running around the space station and collecting those level 3 guns. Normally you'd have to destroy that uh, barrier to get to the upper area. Oops. But if I can do it again, yep, I just need to get up on these boxes. And we're on our way. All right, got my checkpoint. Now I gotta do some platforming with the snarks harassing me. Oh. They really like to push you off there. And I've lost a minute on PB times by getting pushed off over and over again. No, I think I'll keep going.
over here. Those are the barter droids. They try to entice you in to buy their wares. Alright, I'm gonna show off the level 3 scatter blaster now. This is probably the strongest gun in the game. So it went from a uh, slow single shot shotgun to now an automatic monstrosity that takes out anything in its path. Save some damage. Those guys will just distract all the um, troopers that are in the room, so hopefully I don't get as many shooting at me, which will let me actually see and do the jump to get up here. Of course, the game wants to end with a corner clip. Once I get through here, I'm home free. And then it's just playing out the game. Mm. Face meet wall, wall meet face. Trying to just line up the center of my model with the center of the crease. There we go. Last out of bounds tech to get to the final boss. As long as these guys don't push me off the bridge. Sprinting to the finish line. The final boss of this game is actually done on two separate levels. Uh, the first level, we need to take control of him so that we can actually damage him because he's so strong. And to take control of him, we use an arcade cabinet. And to use the arcade cabinet, we need to collect the, the blue chips to make the arcade cabinet work. Uh, the blue chips are hidden in this uh, map, one in each area. So the first area is the center. And so I have to destroy all these boxes searching for a chip to pop out of one of them. There's a launch pad that I accidentally hit. So these are now the level three rockets. I don't want to use them quite yet. Okay, so that's a chip. So now... I'm going to run to the other the corners that aren't the one that I entered through. To, so to my right is the corner that I came in, came in on. Now I just need to check the boxes of all the other corners by hopefully avoiding being stepped on as well, because that's really the only way he can damage you. It's a insta kill if. Um, his foot lands on you. So that's why I'm trying to stay as far outside as possible, uh, which protects me from him being on top of me. And he can't... Oh, almost missed that one. I'm hoping I can find a speed artifact. There it is. This is a speed artifact. It allows me to run really fast, which helps immensely in not being stepped on. All right. So that was some pretty good chip luck. Found the chips actually pretty fast. I think I only really struggled on the center one. So now that we have all the chips, I just need to get to his arcade cabinet. To 
And now I get to actually play as the final boss in the game. So the mills will have to do the dirty work for me in destroying their leader. So I have a smash attack, I have a stomp, and I have homing uh, rockets. Uh, the only attack we actually use of homing rockets because um, nothing really gets close enough to stomp or smash, and they're just slower attacks. Uh, so the enemies come in waves. The first waves are the snarks. So I just need to just keep launching homing missiles at them and hope they hit. Uh, you can see that there are troopers uh, trying to hit me as well, but I'm general corrosive, so they can't do any damage to me. So I'll just keep walking back and forth. And hopefully I'll crush them, but they don't actually um, they don't actually matter in progressing the stages. They're just there throughout the fight, and I'll just destroy them if I can. So yep, yeah, I just stepped on that one. Uh, the next phase is Titans. Um, they can only spawn when you're not looking at them. So now that they've actually spawned in. When I take out this group of titans, I'll do a little pirouette, and the next set will spawn instantly. And I actually don't want the missiles to lock on to the titans when they're running at me. Otherwise, the missiles just miss and go by them. So I want, I really want them to just run straight at me, and then I can shoot ahead of them, and they'll run into the missiles. But this guy is not cooperating. Playing a little hide and seek, are we? Okay, there we go. So I'll do another spin. There's another one there. There should be two. That kind of concerns me. He could be to my right, maybe. Yeah, okay, he's over to my right. I'm gonna work on him because it's a lot easier to hit. Okay, he just became a lot harder to hit. <laughs> okay, this is just getting silly now. Don't even, oh my gosh. Is this a game to you? Okay, good. Thought he was gonna have a chuckle and play a little, uh, little keep away from me. Yeah, so see how the missiles are like landing at their feet? That's where I want. I want them to actually do damage to him instead of flying past the titan. I'll give him, okay. So final wave, the predators come. They're just like the snarks. You just get them locked on and let the missiles do the work. So if you collect all the secret ships in the game, uh, that allows you to unlock all the multiplayer levels. And the final multiplayer level actually has a arcade cabinet for corrosive. So if you're playing multiplayer, someone can be corrosive and you can all fight against corrosive on multiplayer. Because you can create all sorts of games in the multiplayer game mode. Um, we would uh, each take rec recruiter grenades and recruit uh, the bots that they put on the level and then have the, the bots fight it out, kind of like our own little gladiator coliseum. Uh, we'd also do like... Um, I don't, I don't know how to describe the game mode, but one person would take control of like a really strong bot, and then everyone else would have to try and kill them. So now everything should be destroyed, and now I'm going to take down the station. So yeah, this level was a means of actually being able to damage Corrosive. And there's Zabi again, captured, being useless. Doesn't even say thank you. So 
So the final fight doesn't actually take too long, as long as you know where all the cleaners are located. And so there's a simple cycle that you do where you can throw cleaners and shoot the level three rocket launcher at corrosive at the same time. So you throw your two cleaners, fire your four rockets, and then you go to the next cleaner while you're reloading. So then the next time you engage them, you throw your two cleaners, fire your four rockets, find the next set of cleaners, do that over again, throw your cleaners, reload, and then hopefully I'll do it in one cycle. Um, so time ends when the screen fades to black, which should be in like, hopefully a minute if I do this right. So we're black back on the Iron Star. And there's the weakened General Corrosive. He becomes a zombie himself, basically. He's joining the zombie bots. But now in his weakened state, we can actually defeat him because he's fallen from space. the right weapons. So I'm just going to unload everything I have at him and get the first cleaner. The worst thing that can happen is if a cleaner blows up in your hand from one of his rockets that he throws. Um, I don't think that's happened yet. Uh oh, okay. Oh, I, I missed a rocket. Must have missed a few. Or I had a. If you have a cl cleaner blow up in your hand, that can take away a ton of damage. But he has been defeated. So yeah, when the screen uh, fades to black, that's when time ends. And time. So that was Metal Arms Glitch in the System. Thanks for tuning in. Um, give a shout out to all the other runners on the Discord, and I'm going to put my socks back on. <laughs> nice run, Jason. Stick around for more great runs. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up.